I've read the Quran, I have read 20% of the Bible. And I want to examine the question with you together. Does God exist? Before I continue, let my words not trigger a reaction. Let my words not trigger a response. Instead, let my words trigger a search within yourself. Let them trigger questions that you ask yourself. For I am just a human like you. Not better, not smarter. By the way, if you're new here, I'm Jordan, 23 years old, did over $4 million in revenue, hired over 50 people, and I make videos on YouTube since 2012. And I am conditioned just like you. I have not understood the truth behind all the questions that trigger me. I may have made some realizations that are absolutely true, but don't believe me. Never believe anyone, as beliefs will always remain beliefs. With that being said, who created God? Please think about it. Who created God? Or did he create us? you may say. If you say that God created us, that implies that we are part of his creation, right? And if God is holy, loving, merciful, and if we are his creation, then we too should be loving, merciful, holy, right? If God really created you, then why are you living life mostly filled with negative emotions? Then why are there people killing each other out of fear and anger? And if God did not create us, then who created God? When I think about it for myself, I can only come up with one answer. We did. People did. Humans did. Not the animals. Not nature. People. People created the idea of God. This clarifies why there are so many of them. When you search on Google, there are thousands of gods in the world that we created. Not me. Probably not you. But people. People created God. Not good. Not bad. Just the reality. But don't believe my words. Evaluate for yourself the question of who created God. Now, if people created God, then it is thought, thought that created God, right? Because isn't 99% of the population controlled by their mind, by their thoughts? I'm asking you, do you think that this inner voice that is talking to you all day is you, that it is you speaking? May you find the answer to this crucial question. You may find more understanding to the question this video. I say it often and I have to repeat myself, don't believe me. This just creates another belief. Now, why do you not want beliefs? Because you will never know if it is true. Because if you build your house on concrete, because I say it is concrete, and you start building your dream house on top of it, you know, the villa with the swimming pool, the garden, the pool table, and so on. But one day you realize that it was built on sand, then you realize that it could collapse at any moment, right? Many people die without ever experiencing this collapse. They pass away without ever realizing their dream was built on sand. Now they're not lucky to never have experienced this. For the same reason you are not lucky to have found this video. So you may get a glimpse of that sand. You would only be unserious if you continue to live on sand in that house that could collapse at any moment. You would be silly, wouldn't you? So why will many people continue to live with their eyes closed after this video, after realizing that for themselves? Perhaps because this house provides comfort, more comfort than the pain to see the reality of it, that it is in fact built on sand. Perhaps it is for all of us just too painful to see that we have lived our whole life in lies. Or perhaps we just love the pride that we feel of being religious or the superiority towards other beliefs or even atheists. This feeling of being on the good path, the moral path, the right path, in comparison to those who are lead astray, right? So does God exist? That's the question. But to most, just a question out of curiosity, not an impactful question. Now, why do I say that? Why is that so? Because the answer wouldn't impact your daily life. If God does exist, then your day-to-day -day will still be your day-to-day. -day. And if God doesn't exist, your day-to-day -day will also still be your day-to-day. -day. So back to what I said earlier, why did people create God? Perhaps out of fear, and therefore the longing for security and perceived sense of clarity that it brings. And worshiping your God will keep this perceived sense of clarity, security alive, right? Which is probably why so many people continue to believe, because they actually feel some of the things they long for. And they continue to believe the words of their priest or their leader. But my question to you, why would you follow the observation of someone else? He or she may have 
experienced it. But why make it your experience? When you are following, you're not observing and examining for yourself, right? Why do you want to observe and examine for yourself, you may ask? It brings me back to the point, why build your house on sand? Because this will be or could be the result of not examining for yourself and just believing me, my words. I say to you, your house is built on sand. You do not examine, you follow my words to be true. So are you capable of letting go? Letting go of the authority of your priest, boss, coach, father, society, and even the authority of your own opinion so that you can start to see clearly, not through a broken mirror, nor through a field of mist, but to finally start looking at, at yourself as you are. So not through the lens of good or bad, not through the filter of the mind, if you want to know more about this, understanding more about this filter of the mind, you may watch this video next. But I'm talking about how you can look at yourself as you are without religious rules, without good or bad, nor right or wrong, without you shall not do this, you shall do that. Just looking at yourself as you are, to simply see without conflict. See what I mean? I'll give you an example. If I have white skin and I live in Asia, then this is the truth, right? But what is not true is that I have a pale skin and I live in Asia and that this is good because this is an ID created by men or women. And in each situation, there's always a truth. So we want to see what we are, not who we should be. So my question to you, who are you? To see the real you, to see my real self. When I do that for myself, I see men who desires to become famous desires to be superior to others, desires to achieve something big before he dies. That's the truth when I do this for myself. But also I see fears of being seen as unsuccessful or the fear that I lose my athletic body that I've worked so hard on in the gym. And also the fear to lose the perceived status I feel sometimes. For example, in and outside the gym. Now, if you can do this for yourself, the consequence will be clarity. And isn't it clarity that we all want? Why you watch this video? You are unserious if you believe me. You are serious if you ask yourself. Now when does this happen? When can you start to look at yourself with clear eyes? Not watery eyes because you feel regret. Nor fiery eyes because you feel pain or anger. Now, my answer is when you are 100% serious. When you really, really want it. Therefore, it often happens during a crisis in your life, financial crisis, health crisis, whatever. These are moments when most people become committed to really finding the truth of the emotion, of the situation they're in. I mean, why would you want to really know if, for example, God exists, if your life is at perfect harmony? The question would never arise, right? If your life is at perfect harmony. Now, maybe it would, but it would more so be out of curiosity, not a desire to really to want to know. Now, does this mean you have to create this crisis? No, I think I, I'm not even sure if you really can fabricate this because your mind is very smart. Maybe you start to see that your current existence is a crisis. Maybe you start to get a glimpse of the truth about your own life. What you really experience on a daily basis. Is that not a crisis already, my friend? I'm asking you. Do you want to spend your remaining existence where your days are mostly filled with negative emotions, irritation, fear, anxiety, stress, overwhelm, and maybe 10% of your day filled with positive emotions, excitement, happiness? Are you really thinking about creating a crisis instead of looking at the one in front of you? Again, don't believe me. Just look at it yourself. And again, don't see me as your next authority because you find truth in the words that you hear. Don't see authority in anyone because you will just be repeated in the same cycle the cycle of following the cycle of beliefs you are responsible for yourself but do you see this when you do you may start to see how strong you are you may start to see how capable you are that you do not need to depend on any god or mortal human being like me and you may even start to see that you can become all that you think god is that you can become all that you think he is peaceful compassionate, at bliss, eternal, whatever that is for you. May you see the truth in your life Wow, you live it. Talk soon. If you're serious, you may check the show notes. Now here's my poem about the essence of it all. If God created all, then why is there strife, pain and suffering in this life? 
feelings and wars and anger and fear doesn't seem so loving and holy, my dear. Maybe, just maybe, we made God instead to help ease our minds, to calm all this threat. Don't just believe what I'm telling you, my friend. Think it over for yourself to find the end. Question the voices that chatter all day. It might not be you who they really obey. Rather than swallow what others have said, taste your own truth and by that be led. You are powerful, you are strong, you see. Maybe God is not essential, that his peace lives in thee.